Hey everybody, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional, and last week the title of the, uh, the study was Stick a Fork in It, and why? Because it is finished. It's kind of like a, a turkey, you know, you stick a fork in it, see if it's, it's done. Well, I can just tell you right now, it is done. What Jesus did at Calvary is complete, totally complete. And so all the things that come with salvation, you know, let, let me just share this a little bit. Um, you know, it's kind of like my phone. I don't have it on me. But, you know, that phone it was meant to just make telephone calls to friends and family, right? But the smartphone does so much more. Now, I know a lot of people that really brag about the fact that they have just a flip phone or whatever. But, you know, the thing of it is that phone is designed to do so much more than just make a phone call. And so those of us who are somewhat techy, we want to know how to use this thing to the fullest. So we'd get in there and we dig. And boy, you know, it has GPS and, and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of apps that we use. And so it really helps our um, uh, way of life. There's a lot of things we can do that, that we couldn't do before because of this thing that is a smartphone. Well, other people get that smartphone and they never figure out what it's for other than make a, a phone call. Once again, does that make that phone any less than a smartphone? No, it's still a smartphone. It's the guy who uses it that is the dummy. And it's the same thing here. When I talk about being complete in him, Jesus Christ completed everything at Calvary. We are complete in him. It is finished. And therefore, quit asking him or quit begging him to do something that he's already done. It's time for you to figure out how this thing works. Well, the Bible says all of his promises are yes and amen. In other words, they're available to you and I. I can walk you through though. There's, uh, through those, there's usually, uh, uh, the Bible, there's about three to 4,000 promises in there that God makes to us, and those are part of our covenant with him. But most people never dig in. And so last week, that's what we did in Colossians chapter 2, starting with verse 8. It says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. So if you want to live according to the basic principles of the world, have at it. But you will never find that abundant life that Jesus talked about. He said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Well, what we have to do is figure out how this works, just like the smartphone, and start tapping into the sources, to the power that comes with it. Jesus tells us, the things that I do, you shall do also, and greater work shall you do, because I go to be with the Father. Other scriptures, scriptures, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to that power that works in us. So it's time to turn on the power. And so we go on, we don't want to live according to the basic principles of the world, but to according to Christ. For in him, here it is, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, he was 100% God, 100% man, and he came to earth to fulfill what his call was, and that was to redeem man back to God so we could have a relationship with him. And you are complete in him. This is verse 10. You are complete in him who is the head over all principality and power. He's the head over all principality and power. And that means all principality and power that is both good and evil. He's the head over it all. And then last week I showed you that in... Uh, chapter 1 verse 19 it said it pleased the father that in him all the fullness should dwell so in him all the fullness should dwell and and then it it also says here like i said in 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 chapter 2 verse 9 for in, in him dwells all the fullness of the godhead well then last week i showed you in ephesian it said and god made him head over the church which is his body the fullness of him <laughs> So we're a part of all this. See, that's the way God always intended us, for us to be a part of this. We're going to rule and reign with him, so this is just practice here on earth. So when we talk about this being complete in him, don't think it's all about you. 
It's him trying to raise us up to be like him. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 29 that he's trying to conform us into the image of his son. Well, if you're going to be conformed in the image of his son, then boy, we better come a long way from where we are right now. Amen? Okay, so that's kind of a recap on last week and where we're going this week. So we're going to pick this up again tomorrow. We'll start with verse uh, 14 and uh, from where we left off last week. Remember, Jesus loves you. Man, I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.